Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell. You'll get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And when I'm not asking Bruce, hey, how big was Batista's? Well, you know. One of the things I like to do is help people save money. And if you're watching this video right now and you're in a 30 year loan, man, you're overpaying your single biggest bill and you may not even realize it. I want you to do a little experiment for me. Take your calculator out, multiply your monthly house payment by 360 payments. That's how many payments there are on a 30 year loan. That big scary number, that's your total of payments. You're looking at that number? You know you can do better. Keep more of your own money right now and go to savewithconrad.com. Or maybe you've got credit card debt. Man, it's not a matter of if I can save you money with that. Your average interest rate on a credit card is more than 20%. And by the way, all the interest you pay on those credit cards, it's not tax deductible. Whereas the mortgage interest, well, that is tax deductible. So if you owe this debt, it's up to you how to pay it back. Doesn't it make sense to get the cheapest rate possible and the greatest tax deduction possible? Find out how much money you can save right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com. You don't need perfect credit, even scores in the 500s can be approved, and it's no cost out of pocket. But maybe best of all, we're licensed in more than 40 states. We can help more families than ever before. But how much can we save you? Find out right now for free with a quick quote from SaveWithConrad.com. WHW Monday! And now, let's go to the ring! And here's your co-host, Hey Hey, it's Conrad Thompson! Hey Hey, it's Conrad Thompson and you're listening to What Happened When? With the voice of your childhood, Tony Schiavone! Tony, what's going on, man? How are you? How are you doing? Man, better than I deserve. Happier yeah. than a puppy with two Peters. It's a great day here for WHW because guess what? I know the answer to that, but you can go ahead and say it. Our cock is back in action. <laughs> How about that? You know, it's so good to be back. World Championship Wrestling from 1986 is back on the Peacock Network. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in business. And what a show we had last week. A lot to unpack here before we get started. We did something, uh, kind of special last week. We put David Crockett back in front of wrestling fans, you and him watching the great American bash. We've had such a great time revisiting 1986. And of course you guys were a tag team back then. And to have you guys just reminisce about the good old days on a pretty historic Jim Crockett promotion show, the great American bash where dusty Rhodes became world champion in Greensboro, the home of Starcade. What a cool moment. What a cool show. But that wasn't it. During that episode, you said, you know, David, we'd love to have you come down to AEW. I want to go ahead and formally invite you to the Bajangles Center. <laughs> come on down to the Bajangles, check out AEW. And later that night, ta da, he did. And uh, that's not the whole story, right, Tom? He was, uh, I had told David during the day, first of all, David came during, during the afternoon and he was there holding court for a lot of the young wrestlers. You know, they all, a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them came up to him and said, hello. And I heard him talking about Johnny Weaver and, and I heard him talk about Johnny Valentine. And so he was, and David's always in a great mood. And so I told David, I said, have you met Tony Khan? He said, no, I haven't. I said, well, I'm going to make sure you say hello to him. He said, okay, well, things got busy and I didn't get to do that. But as uh, Paul White and I go out and do elevation, all of a sudden, Tony Khan, who had walked out earlier, like he usually does, came back out. He said, listen, uh, I've got an idea here. He said, uh, David Crockett is back here with us. And it, how would you guys like to hear him do commentary? And the fans pop yay. And so he introduced David. David walked out on the stage, came right over and did commentary with, uh, with me and Paul White and Eddie Kingston. And it was a, it was a very, very special moment. Tony had seen him backstage and Tony, as everybody knows, is a, just a great kid. He said, Hey, I'm so glad you were, you came and would you like to do some commentary? And David said, sure. So there it was. And David Crockett, uh, lended his, uh, voice to, uh, matches. He didn't know, but he still talked and still did some of these David Crockett isms. And it was, it was a very, very special night on many levels, but especially since David was there. Look at him, Tony. Look that's at what, him. That's what he said. Look at him like a dog. Watch this. Oh, stuff like that. Yeah. It's great stuff, man. He is one of the legitimately nicest guys in wrestling. And I got to tell you, man, I'm really hopeful 
that, and I'm not trying to jinx it, but once upon a time, you thought you were done with wrestling forever too. Yep. And you wandered back in and you're having a great time and people are so happy that you're back around. And I'm not saying at this stage of his life, David actively wants to be a part of wrestling on a regular basis, but right. My goodness, man, between WHW and then having the opportunity for him to call some stuff for AW, sure. I hope that becomes a more regular thing. Not every week. I understand he probably doesn't want to travel and do all the shenanigans, but man, if there were an opportunity here and there for him to just pop back up like that, it, it seems like he's having a blast and boy, are we loving him doing it? Yeah, I agree with everything you just said. He is having a blast. We are loving it. Uh, he brings back the emotions and the feelings of when we were younger. And, uh, so I understand, uh, I understand the feelings that you get when you hear David Crockett's voice. Cause I know the feelings I get when I hear it and a uh, very special time, great show in Charlotte. Uh, we, uh, sold out the, uh, the old Charlotte Coliseum. And by the way, another, uh, side note to that event, I am, uh, doing, I think it's, I think I'm still doing elevation. It may have been right before I started doing, um, AEW's dynamite. I got a text from somebody else. And that text said, look to your right. And I looked to my right, stands right to our side and sitting over there in all his glory was the Bojangles champion. Oh God. Can you believe and, it? Stupid and, ass Jay Z and that spinning belt and his lovely new girlfriend. Did you yep. meet the girlfriend? I waved at him. Uh, did not meet her, but I sent him a text. I said, I said, never buy a ticket. I said, I will always get you in. He didn't buy he, a ticket. I know he didn't. He said, I'm here on business. Bojangles sent me here. Yeah. How about that? Can you believe that's a sentence? <laughs> God bless Bojangles. I love Bojangles. Love their biscuits. And, uh, so, <laughs> so the Bojangles champion was there with his suit, holding his belt and it was, and, and sunglasses on, uh, so it was great. It was great seeing him again, even from afar. Yeah. From afar is the way to uh, befriend him. You know, he's trying to uh, get in on this hashtag Conrad needs a new friend business. And, uh, I think Cassio kid, once he put his application public, Cassio kid responded with a meme that says, I don't really see that happening. Yeah. Right. I would, I'd go for that. Cause anybody who's a member of a SWAT team, I'd love to be my friend. Well, I don't think, I think we're supposed to, uh, Kizib Fizab, the, the Swizot Swizot team. Fizab. Okay. Fizab. Okay. Maybe he's not. Okay. I'm talking about swatting flies. I think you, uh, you, you look like a Fizat Nizark. You need to shiz out your Mizalf. <laughs> well, Fizak Yuzu. Well, you stupid Fizaking Mizark. Uh, but don't Fizak Mizi. Why are we doing this? <laughs> All right. Listen, you know what? Uh, trying to, uh, speak stupid ass pig Latin, AKA Carney is, is ridiculous, but watching 1986. Boy, it just hits me in the feels and it's back on the ding. I mean, the cock. Mm. I'm so excited. You know, I mean, or as we the, like to say, the Kizok. The Kizok, yeah. Before we get going, we need, you know, inquiring minds want to know. Mm. What'd you think of uh, calling your very first death match? You've never called a death match before, right? No, never called a death match, but in, in many ways, calling a death match is easy because there's, there's really not many holds you got to call or talk about what this will do to this part of the body or you just kind of react to what you see. Right. And yep. basically you go, Oh, ah, ah, look at him. Look at him. Yeah. That's kind of all you do. Uh, I, uh, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed seeing Nick gauge in person. Uh, there's the marks and cuts on his body are very disturbing. Uh, in, uh, behind the scenes in real life, he is such a, a nice young man <laughs> or middle-aged man. He really is. And, and I, I went back and, and talked to him about, about the match and shook his hand and, and thanked him for, for being a part of us and helping us with a great show. And he said, uh, Hey, I'll shake your hand, but you'll get blood on your hand. I said, I don't mind. Uh, and I did have a bloody hand, which I should have taken a picture of. You, but you had those in college all the time, right? Uh, anyway, uh, go ahead, go ahead. Nizzo, you fizz zucker. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, uh, so anyway, uh, so, uh, I, uh, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it and it wasn't, 
as out of control as I anticipated it would be. Maybe I expected a lot more. I don't know. I mean, look, the fans popped when they brought up the glass tubes, the light tubes, uh, and they made the sound. They popped, and I was I was really concerned that glass shards would fly into the audience, you know? That, yeah. that, that concerned me, but that apparently didn't happen. And the, the plate glass, I like that, what they did to that. So, yeah, you know, it, it was something different. I'm, I'm, always in, I'm always for something different. You, you, you can't get mundane. You can't get predictable, I think, with your matches. And, and other than that, you know what? I'm really, really glad that Nick Gage got a payday. And I'm sure his, I don't know what it was, but I'm sure his payday from Tony Khan was probably better than most independent promoters would have given him. All right, so you're saying if you main event, a prime time wrestling show live yeah. on TNT for more than 1.1 million fans. Yeah. Where you have sponsored elements from Domino's pizza, <laughs> but that perhaps <laughs> pays a little more handsomely mm. than wrestling for game changer wrestling on fight. I would think so. Well, Don't know. I I'm not involved in money. I didn't even ask Chris Harrington what it was. Well, why would you? Well, Chris and I do talk a lot about numbers and, oh, he's just dropping dimes on what everybody's making. No, no, Don't fill the beans. You are putting words in my mouth. You Kizak Sizucker. You had the fizz ink about the fizz up you So anyway, so no. So Chris and I talk about, you know, uh, how expensive, like, like for instance, I'll say, uh, so probably a lot of money, Chris, to, uh, go to the United center two days after we go to Houston. And he said, yeah, <laughs> things like that. Uh, but, um, uh, no, he doesn't give me any numbers. So, but yeah, Nick probably made more and I'm, and I'm glad and I'm glad and I'm glad, you know, there was, uh, if you watch dark side of the ring and if you, you follow game changer wrestling on I fight, do. like, I do. like, like, I you love do. like, like you do, yeah. then, you know, Nick Gage. Great guy. But there's a lot of people out there. Didn't know Nick Gage. That's true. Oh, you know? and now they got to see Nick Gage. There may have been a lot of people go, oh yeah, he's the one that almost killed David Arquette or something like that on, on a different level. But now they get to see him and you know, now he's thinking. known as pizza cutter Jones. <laughs> so it's 1986. Here we are. Uh, pull that ding dong out boys and girl. I mean, uh, pull your peacock out season two, episode 30 of world championship wrestling, August 2nd, 1986. That's season two, episode 30. Can you believe we're 30 episodes deep? Uh, yeah, time flies when you're having fun. My, my, my God, we're in August, Conrad. We're in, uh, before you know, it's going to be Christmas. It just feels like we just started this though. So yeah, I know. You know what I'm thinking? What are you thinking, Tony? I, I'm thinking this. I, um, uh, I know the plan is to do 87 next year. Uh oh, I can hear uh, it in your voice. Well, I really want to do 85. Oh, go backwards. Well, it, it's, it's up for debate here. The reason is, is 85 was our first year and on, it was on TBS on TBS. Right. Yeah. And it, that was really, even you though 86 transition, right. From pre TBS to post TBS. Cause uh -huh. it didn't happen in January. It was, it was into the year. What, uh, April. It was yeah. our first. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it was just a very, very magical time for me personally. Arn Anderson's going to come into the promotion too. Yeah. And you know, we had, uh, we had so many things with so many guys appear that were not with us on a regular basis. I remember Michael Hayes walked out did a promo about Ric Flair because they worked at the Omni and it's the first time I'd ever worked with Michael Hayes and little did I know he was an idiot. Um, and so, uh, and a lot of things happened like that. So it was kind of a magical time for me. So I'd like to eventually go back and look at 85, but that's something we can discuss because right now we got a lot more 86 going on. It's going to be a great time. 1986. I'm really having a blast. I hope you guys are too. Uh, fire up that peacock. It's Yay. season two, episode 30. I get it. It's a wrestling podcast, but he's saving us money on our mortgage. Do you really trust this process? The reviews don't lie. 
five star review after five star review. We make it fast. We make it easy and it's no cost or obligation. Give us a shot to earn your business. I'm telling you, you'll be glad you did, especially if you like keeping more of your own money. You don't need perfect credit or money out of your pocket. So what are you waiting for? Hurry to savewithconrad.com. And uh, we're going to start off with a big bang. But before we get going, I think you've got a special countdown for us, right? Special countdown is on the way. Hi, this is Jackson Giovanni. And here's your countdown, you slap dicks. Three, two, one. Play. The Great American Bash started July 1st, Philadelphia, then went to Washington, D.C., Memphis, Norfolk, Virginia, Richmond, Roanoke, Charleston, West Virginia, Charlotte, North Carolina, Fayetteville, North Carolina. We saw the World Heavyweight Championship change hands. The American Dream, Dusty Rhodes, defeated Ric Flair inside a steel cage. Then it all comes right here, the grand finale to the greatest wrestling event ever. Ric Flair goes after Dusty Rhodes and that world's heavyweight title inside a steel cage right here at Atlanta's Fulton County Stadium tonight. Think about it, too. Magnum T.A. He's going to go after that second win. Nikita Koloff, the Russian nightmare, has three. He can make it four tonight. He could become United States heavyweight champion, and then Magnum T.A.'s nightmare will come true. The Great American Bash has been fireworks, skydivers, David Allen Coe, the greatest wrestlers in the world. Jim Crockett Promotions has brought you the best, the best in the world. And it's all going to be the final finale tonight, right here at Atlanta's Fulton County Stadium. You're going to see the best. It's going to be fantastic. The awesome wrestlers. You know, man, he, he wasn't, uh, it wasn't scripted. It wasn't planned. It was mm -hmm. from the hip. You could tell it was from the hip, mm -hmm. but I still got chill bumps when yeah. I kicked in great yeah. stuff, man. Especially seeing the Marlboro sign brought me back. <laughs> and I love just seeing the tape machine in the dugout spinning. Yeah. Oh, here you are in studio. Welcome back to World Championship Wrestling. I'm Tony Schiavone with you today. A very special program. As you heard, David Crockett recorded this morning at Atlanta's Fulton County Stadium talking about the biggest, the finale, the big one, the Great American Bash at Atlanta's Fulton County Stadium. In just a few minutes, the gates will open. The fans will start pouring in for the gigantic matches that you will see tonight at Atlanta's Fulton County Stadium. Slow well, down. A point that David Crockett also brought up about a new world heavyweight champion. Nature boy Ric Flair lost to the American Dream Dusty Rhodes. And for the third time, the American Dream Dusty Rhodes is the heavyweight champion of the world. Today on this program, an in-depth interview with the new world champion and also the former champion, Nature Boy Ric Flair. We'll talk about a new man who has no hair on his head, Jimmy the Boogie Woogie Man Viant, and much more on this special edition of World Championship Wrestling leading up to our big finale in Atlanta tonight, the Great American Bash. With me, first of all, the Russians. To my right, Crusher Khrushchev. Oh, Lord. And to his right, the Russian bear, Ivan Kolov. And I know, gentlemen, what's on your mind, first of all, is the world six-man tag team title. That's right. But first of all, Dusty Rhodes, you did accomplish something. You accomplished something that every professional wrestler wants. And that's that world title. But what you haven't realized is how are you going to defend two world titles? The six-man world title? along with the Road Warriors and the world title. You're going to have to. So there's no way you can defend both titles. So you better find somebody because that's our dream is to take the world's six-man title back to the Kremlin with us. And I have a little revenge I want to do with the Road Warriors. Isn't that right, Ivan? Yes, sir. There is nothing that's going to stop us, Crusher. Nephew Nikita feels the same way as I do and Crusher does. World six-man tag team trophy belongs to us. Dusty Rhodes, Great American Troublemaker, and Road Warriors. It's a matter of time before we get it back. And my crusher brought up, you go find somebody to take your place, and we'll beat them up also. Because that's what we have in mind, to take our trophy back, and nothing will stop us. Now, yes, this Great American Bash has created a lot of interest, has drawn attention from different wrestlers I see coming into the area. This Buddy Landell. It's Bill Dundee, it's Captain Redneck, Dick Murdoch, 
Jayhawkers, is Bobby. Jaggers, his name is, and Dutch Mantel. All these men have proven themselves in the past. Big names in wrestling. Now they've come to the hub of all NWA wrestling, Jim Crockett promotion. And they're going to see how they can fare. And I've run into them in the past many times. And they are all tough. They all have the credentials that prove themselves. But you come out, you people. You still got time. Jump in your car. Come on down to the stadium. See great American bass. See nephew Nikita defeat Magnum TA for United States heavyweight title. Okay. Now, we'd like to take a look at the Russians in action in six-man action right now. I have a call-off, Nikita Koloff and Karcher Khrushchev. And gentlemen, if you will, comment on this match with me, if you would, about the Russians. You know how awesome they are in six-man competition. Let's take a look at that match. In this six-man match, it's Ivan Nikita. So how about this studio commentary Uh huh. that wasn't done from the podium? Right. Talk me through how this was uh, put together to the best of your recollection. Uh, to the best of my recollect- recollection, we taped these matches, obviously, uh, during another TV taping and uh, without commentary because they wanted us to, you know, they wanted them to commentate on it. And we did these from the studio. Uh, from the TBS, actually, <clears throat> I'm going to, uh, I'm going to say that I, I think that we actually had the set in Charlotte at that yeah. time. It, that looks like in my head. Yeah. I thought that's probably backstage, right? Backstage at, at, at the at, office, right? At the office. Right. And, uh, so that's where we did that from. And we just commentated over some extra matches that we had taped today. They would be known as AEW dark. Right. You know, other, other matches that weren't a part of the regular card. So that's kind of what, uh, what happened there. And I, uh, I wanted to ask something, I don't mean to cut you off, but you said, ahead. go, uh, you know, they wanted, and you said, they let's get specific on that. In this era, were you sort of pitching ideas from a production standpoint? Like, Hey, what if, or how about if we, or is that simply something that, that David or Jimmy would have brought to you and, and you always just sort of followed orders or could you throw in two cents at this point and say, Hey, what if, no, I never threw in two cents. I'm still very much a rookie here, you know? And, uh, but that, I mean, you did that in WCW too, right? I mean, you were coughing on roller skates. You didn't give a fuck what happened with the promotion. Just, you know, pay me and I'm gonna do as little work as possible and get on uh, out of here. Well, no, uh, pay me. I'm going to do as much work as you need. And I'm going to, then I'm going to get out of here. I, 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 so anyway, I, um, where the fuck was I? You were talking about production. I was was talking about something really important here. Oh, production. I know you were talking about that. Uh, I'm really excited Okay. that in 1986, we're going to see the arrival of the Kansas Jayhawks. I can't fucking wait for that. Uh, Bobby Jaggers and Dutch Mantell were uh, a couple of my buddies and two of the most entertaining fucks ever. Bobby didn't really mean to be Bobby thought he was serious, but he was just a silly old goof and he's no longer with us. I know. And he and Dutch Mantell, I may have, I'm sure I've told the story, but we see the Kansas Jayhawks. I'll go into more stories about them, but, uh, Bill Dundee, I guess is coming buddy Landell. Uh, they mentioned buddy Landell and I've, already thought they've they fired buddy landell but i, I guess yeah, they brought him that, back yeah landell got another shot i think yeah right uh so there you go so anyway uh i like that and god bless ivan koloff sure do miss him man how fun would he be to have on one of these episodes oh. like a bonus run in oh my god and that guy had seen and done so much you know i talked to somebody the other day i can't believe this is real but i talked to somebody the other day who said that they knew where the original footage of, of him beating Bruno was. Oh my God. The whole match that supposedly even the WWF didn't have it, but, but they knew the private collector who did. Uh huh. And I thought, buddy, that's worth some money. Boy, that is not just to, to Jim Crockett fans and not just to, you know, Koloff fans, but specifically to the world wrestling federation from a, or WWE rather mm-hmm. from a Bruno standpoint, man. What a big moment. Wow. I hope that eventually that's readily available because I would love for us to take a look at that. That would be, that would be wonderful. I, and I think I've mentioned uh, that I saw when he lost to Pedro Morales 
uh, at in Madison Square Garden. That that may and may have I obviously I think I saw it on YouTube. I may have seen it back when I worked for Vince, because I would go back in that library and all the time just rack up tapes. You know, they had uh, tape machines that you could just. You watch were fans. So you were just watching stuff. Watching shit. Yeah, man. Watching the old TNTs, uh, the Tuesday Night Titans, and watching stuff from Madison Square Garden. I just and I saw the when Ivan uh, lost to Pedro Morales, you know, it was big for Pedro being a Puerto Rican in New York city to win the title. And when he, when they, they just filled the ring with people and cops jumped up on the ring and stood facing the crowd on all four sides with their back to the combatants. And it just looked like such a big, the, the visual, as we say, the optics, these, one of our, our catch words, the optics, just made it seem like a bigger than life type moment. And, um, back in those days in Madison square garden, you know, like you said, uh, Ivan Koloff was a big freaking deal, man. He was a big deal. And, and the flip side of that is Ivan and this where people, unless they knew Ivan, they, though, they won't get it, but in backstage, yeah, he was always smiling, right? Always smile, and then camera, and he become this Russian bear in this, you know, always pissed off at America type deal. Look at this. Yeah, Nikita didn't know how to uh, work that lariat or that clothesline or that Russian sickle. Of course, it's sickle. You're right about that. No one gets the power. Now, here's a question I wanted to bring up. After you win a match, why many times do we see you clearing the ring of all your opponents? Uh, we don't like to leave litter. We don't like to leave garbage laying around. Well, the winners of the match, as we just saw, and Ivan Koloff and Crusher Khrushchev helping us compensate. Ivan Koloff, Nikita Koloff, and Crusher Khrushchev. And the winning move, that big sickle, Russian sickle by Nikita Koloff, which brings us to this point. Tonight, Atlanta's Fulton County Stadium, the Great American Bash. U.S. heavyweight title, best of seven series, match number five. Now, Nikita leads three to one. He won the first three. Magnum won the last one in Greensboro. Many people say Magnum is on his way back. Very controversial the way he won, though. Yes, but tonight, everybody's going to see Nephew Nikita become United States heavyweight champion. You know, every week, we get thousands and thousands of different letters from fans all over the country, all over America. I bring one out here to read for today because they're all about the same thing. These Americans write the same thing. They say, hey, Koloff, Khrushchev. Hey, I don't know what this means. Hey, my family and friends seen you on TV last week, and we're all of the same opinion. We don't like you. I uh, can't say this word, rats. Why don't you go back to Russia? You think that you're going to beat Magnum TA. Well, nephew Nikita is leading three to one, and tonight he's going to take United States heavyweight champion. You bring your flags, your American flags, and you can say what you want. But whenever you get down there and witness for, for yourself, you'll know who the superior athlete is, nephew Nikita. Well, fans, tonight we'll find out match five of the best of seven U.S. title at Atlanta's Fulton County Stadium as part of the Great American Bash. And when we come back, a talk with the heavyweight champion of the world, the American dream, Dusty Rhodes. Don't go away. I've seen this Dusty interview, and I'm excited to watch it again. It's a major moment. You know, yeah. at this point, Flair's been the champ for a minute. So it's a major moment for there to be a new champ. And, uh, here he is, boys and girls. The most coveted belt in the world today, the NWA World Heavyweight Championship belt. And I'm very proud to say it is held by one man, the American dream, Dusty Rhodes, for the third time in his career, becomes the heavyweight champion of the world. How does it feel to be the world champion for the third time, Dusty? It feels good as punch, good as gold. Dusty Rhodes, the American dream. Three times world's heavyweight champion, nature boy, Ric Flair, all them years. Some say he's a great champion. Some say if he came out of the Great American Bash with the title, he'd be the greatest champion of all times. The proof is in the pudding, and the pudding's sitting here. Dusty Rose, the American Dream. Little Plummer's son from Austin, Texas, Tony Schiavone, becomes World Heavyweight Champion for the third time. A lot of people said if Ric Flair would go through 14 bashes, it would be something incredible. The 13th bash, he lost the title. And a lot of people said, you know, he had a lot of tough competitors during those matches. You were at the bashes also. You had a lot of tough matches in a cage with a, one of the road warriors against the Andersons. You had to go up against the Midnight Express. Both men very fatigued coming into that 13th bash. How did you prepare for that? 
Well, I think, Tony, that uh, fatigue doesn't really have anything to do with it. Dusty Rose, the American Dream. When you're wrestling for the most coveted sports title in the, in the world, in the world of sports, $45,000 belt, million dollar year, then fatigue has no play in it. Dusty Rose, the American Dream, was raised to be a world's heavyweight champion. He was raised to be a champion, was studded by a plumber in Austin, Texas, grew up in a plumber's ditch when I was eight years old working and had this dream to be the American dream. And for many years before it was fashionable to be a doctor and come out of the, the back closet and say, I like wrestling. Before it was fashionable to be a, a lawyer or somebody say, I like wrestling. Before all that was fashionable, Dusty Rhodes was the American dream. He gave the American public this one thing that they could reach out and touch and reach out and believe in. They say, well, Dusty Rhodes, you're going to talk for two minutes on TV. Nobody ever told Dusty Rhodes what to say, how to say it, or how to do it. The fact is, the world's heavyweight title was what every great athlete and every great sport is after. So on that given night, fatigue had nothing to do with it. Ric Flair was at his best. I was at my best. It was one-on-one. -on -one. The cage was there. There was nobody in, in inside. There was no referee falling down. It was pure, simple, and done. The American Dream 1, 2, 3 became World's Heavyweight Champion for the people. The dream is true. It lives. It's alive. It's out there, gosh almighty. It's everywhere for everybody to reach for. Whether you're black, brown, white, green, yellow, whether you're a great commentator here, as Tony Schiavone has been, whether you're Jim Crockett Promotions, I mean, gosh, it's everywhere. The American dream can be had, and Dusty Rhodes has it. And it's like a good friend of mine said, David Allen Cove, if you're big star bound, let me tell you, it's a long, hard ride. And tonight again, a cage is being erupted being erected right there in the full kind of stadium for one reason. After it's all over, all the music's over, all the men jump out them planes from the sky and land in the stadium. It's 40,000, 50,000 people come and see Dusty Rose, the American Dream, Rick Flair inside a steel cage. This time, I'm defending the world's heavyweight top. And reminds me of, as you know, one of Space Mountain Rick Flair's greatest scenes of all time was to be the man, you got to beat the man. Well, nature boy, if you ever want to be the man again, you have to beat the man. Dusty Rhodes, the American Dream, world's heavyweight champion. The heavyweight champion of the world, the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes. And when we come back, we'll talk about Baby Doll and her chance to get her hands on Jim Cornette tonight in a cage. Don't go away. Buddy, was he hammering that American dream stuff or what? Wow. <laughs> it's good stuff. Yeah, it was good stuff, buddy. Uh, and now for something, well, a little hmm. different millions and millions of young girls out there waiting to hear the winners of our rocket roll express super summer sizzler tour contest. And we can announce six girls right now who will be going on the tour with the Rock and Roll Express starting Monday. And those girls are Don Wells of Douglasville, Georgia, Shawnee Montgomery of Bainbridge, Ohio, Leela Pittman of Burgesstown, Pennsylvania, Tanya Smithers of Charleston, West Virginia, Trudy Robinson of Franklin, North Carolina, and Rhonda Barnes of Elberton, Georgia. Those six girls will go on the tour. The two girls who won a dream date with the Rock and Roll Express, Wendy Scruggs of Gaffney, South Carolina, and Kim Baird of Lexington Park, Maryland. Two young boys out of China Grove, North Carolina, won our Rock and Roll Express lookalike contest, Alan Ritchie and Justin McClary. Now let's talk about the Midnight Express with Jim Cornett in a cage tonight against the Road Warriors, and their partner tonight will be Baby Doll in a cage, Dusty. The Road Warriors, my man. I mean, they're they the baddest two men on the streets. We are the world's six-man tag team champions. They are the baddest two individuals on the street. And I know we're going to be taking a look right now at the Midnight Express and the Road Warriors and what happened when Baby Doll decided to come out and do it to it. Jim Cornette talking to the Midnight Express, trying to explain to them what they need to do to these two men. And, and they're very proud of their belts at this time. Of course, they're standing on the floor. My question is, and we see Cornette seeming to be very confident right now. We've heard him on TV. He's been a guest commentator with myself and David Crockett. He seems not to be afraid of anyone, especially not Baby Doll. Is he afraid? When you have the money Jim Cornette has because he is the manager of the world's tag team champions, you don't have to be afraid of They see the road warriors got to beat these men. These men don't have to be the road war. 
If they're going to win the top, Big Bubba, 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 Big Bubba Rogers. I'm going to feel his noggin not too long down the road. Big Bubba's out there. Isn't that something? Well, we have seen plenty of Bubba Rogers in the past. Yeah. So have you. Yes. Seemingly. Watch the robot. Here's my man, Animal, now. Animal's one of the strongest men, if not the strongest man in wrestling. I've never seen anybody more strong than he is at any given time. Day or night, the middle of night, middle of morning, he is strong. You're going to see him do some things here that a normal man could not do. They are tremendous athletes. They are geared. They train six days a week. They, they, they think about their bodies. They think about what they're going to do. They think about their athletic ability. And don't let them kid you. Just like the world six-man title is important, the world's tag team title is important to these guys. They just won a million dollars. The Jim Crack Sea Memorial Cup, which is coming to Baltimore, by the way, next year. Two-day event. They are the, they're defending uh, cup holders, if you will. Right there, Dennis Condry is just wondering why his mom even sent him out for this thing here. <laughs> Right here, look at the agility, tremendous agility. Boy, Tremen and he's overjoyed. See, that's the thing about it. When he does something good, he just gets overjoyed about it. His chest puffed up to about 75 inches. Well, there's no doubt now the, the Midnight Express have a game plan against the Road Warriors. And obviously, that's the wrong game plan to try to match them strength for strength. They can't. They can match them with speed because the Midnight Express are the world's tag team champions. They are very quick. They are very fast. They have been a team a lot longer than the Road Warriors, a lot longer than Dusty Rhodes and Magnum TA, almost as great as the team that was of uh, a few years back was Dusty Rhodes and Captain Redneck himself, Dick Murdoch, because uh, nobody did it any better. The Road Warriors here are, are jockeying for position, if you will, right here, grab a headlock again on Dennis Condry. There's no way Dennis going to get loose from this thing. Right here, you see the Road Warriors, very, like I say, very agile, very quick, very fast. Okay, dump down. Over him, try to leap over him, jumped up. That oh. was a jump for life. That was fear. Right there, drop kicked him right in the stomach, drove three boots right through his gut. People do not expect the Road Warriors to be that agile. Now look at Cornad going after lover boy Dennis. Encourage him to go back to the ring, but of course, Cornad is not in the ring with him like he will be tonight. No, he's not. Tonight is a different story when they step in that ring with, uh, with the Midnight Express, Jim Cornette. And the loveliness baby dog gonna be right there. They still planning strategy here. That's the thing right here. They talking a lot. They plan the strategy, and they killing time. Now Hawk comes in. Hawk is super strong, super fast, super quick. And and Hawk is a more thinker than most people think he is. He thinks about moves before it does them. He talks about them on the airplane. Talks wrestling all the time. Hawk would be a great Wolves heavyweight single contender as Animal Wolves. And uh, it was said that Dusty Rhodes, since becoming a World Heavyweight Champion, has to look at the fact that all these people that were friends of mine now are going after the World Heavyweight title. Well, Dusty Rhodes is open-minded. I'm, I'm the World Champion to defend the title against all comers. And if, if it's these two men here, my main men, then that's fine with me. And it would be a great match. But right now, Dennis Condry got his hands full with Hulk. You see Dennis here is yeah, trying yeah. to erupt. erupt. What he's doing is trying to bring out the sense of humor of Hulk here. Hulk ain't going to go for it. Look here. Hulk going to ripple oh, up. My. Woo! You're talking about a powerful man, just as solid as steel. Hawk going to ripple up. Solid as steel, Hawk. Now, this <laughs> is a match for the World Tag Team title, the Midnight Express against the Road Warriors. Obviously, after seeing something like that, you got to go into conference once again. And So I'm going to go ahead and mute the rest of this. I didn't realize yeah. we are going to watch the entire match. No. It's so great. I, I get caught up in Dusty's commentary yes. because it's a preview of what we would see years later in WCW. I mean, he's... He's putting on the classic dusty voice, but he's got these great dusty isms and mm -hmm. he's just, uh, he's entertaining as hell, man. And, uh, his, he could just, just, he could just go sitting down. He can go. I mean, his stream yeah. of consciousness was, was incredible. And he just, and he obviously made up shit on, on the fly. Like Hawk has rippled up. He didn't plan to say that. Right. Yeah. No. So we go to a break. And I guess we're going to show some more coming back, but, uh, a shout out by the way, to, uh, uh, one of the girls that I mentioned on the super summer sizzler tour, uh, uh Sandy Montgomery of the world, the American dream, dusty roads, and taking a look at the road warriors against the midnight express. And like I said, before the break, it's obvious the road warriors can take care of the midnight express, which will leave baby doll and her chance to get her hands on Jim Cornette. Well, this match took place in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, the capital of North Carolina, uh, capacity still out crowd. You see right here, we're backing into it. All right, go ahead. Sorry. No. So anyway, <clears throat> Sandy Montgomery was one of the girls and I still stay in touch with Sandy. She's uh, married, has a family 
and uh, I got to know her parents, and uh, she was a nice young lady. How about that? Still that's, friends. That's cool, man. What a great shot. I love this angle. It was set way off from the ring, sort of at an angle that wasn't straight on. I yeah. just think um, anytime we see something that sort of breaks the monotony of the, the standard old shot, it's cool. And I like when you get a perspective like, you look at it and you think, man, this is, uh, it's getting tangled up in the cameraman's cord there. Yeah. This is what it would look like if you were in the crowd, you know, right. If you were there a lot, like I like that angle, that looks like you're in the, the lower bowl. Yes. That's cool. That is cool. I like that too. I've never seen somebody get tangled up in the cameraman's cord before. That was fun. You don't see it much these days because I think I may be wrong. I think every, each cameraman has his own grip now to help move the cord back when did you discover you had your own grip you were what 12 uh seven oh yeah probably uh junior in high school you you were 17 before you started whacking oh you were talking about something else i thought you i i thought you meant grip of a of a golf club because that's what we talk about here a lot on the show golf well you said grip and that's the first thing that came to mind well, so I get, I get I, it. I, I get it. What you're coming. Oh, look at this spot. I was Didn't told that, that when, you, when you grip it and rip it, it meant something else. No, no. Hey, did you ever see uh Ray Mysterio when he was in WWE, he would come out to the ring and he has his mask on. Right. And he would sometimes wear two masks and he would lean down over a little kid and put his head against the little kid's head. And he would say something to him. And then he would take his mask off and, and give it to the little kid. Do you ever see that? No, I did not. Well, supposedly a little kid posted that story. I guess this was years ago. He's he's a grown person now. Okay. But he says that Ray Mysterio did that to him Mm. where he comes out, puts the mask on him, or maybe they've already got a mask and he goes head to head with them and just gives them like a little pep talk. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, him bonding with kids, sort of like a generation before Brett, the Hitman Hart would take his sunglasses off and right. Give him a little kid. Well, supposedly according to this kid, his testimony is. What, what Ray says is do something with your life. You little bitch, (laughs) which feels like the lowest Shivani school of motivation. (laughs) If that is true. And of course I don't believe a half of what I hear. That is tremendous. Do something with your life. You little bitch, a t-shirt. At box of gimmicks, the lowest rules.com. <laughs> oh, that is a great statement. Isn't it? I, I loved it. <laughs> Did that just recently come out? Yes. Oh, uh, of course it was on. I'm sure it was on social media and everything you read on social media is true. Uh, so I'm sure that really happened. Bobby could, Bobby had a great working punch there because that working punch of his, he would obviously hit his chest more than he would hit the person, but it looked good. A lot of, a lot of guys did that. Flair did that too. All the guys who could really work. Really sold the kick out, didn't they? Speaking of really work, you guys were really working those ticket sales the other day. You're announcing the, uh, the first dance AEW is coming to Chicago at the United center. And, uh, from what I understand, Tony tickets nearly sold out the first day, you guys continue to open up sections, but the gist is over 13,000 tickets sold on day one. So that makes four shows in the Chicago area inside a 30 day period. I think it's fair to say that Chicago is the official capital of professional wrestling in North America. Well, Chicago is regardless of what you may hear on TV. I know they've had their problems. Every city has its violence problems, but Chicago is still one of the great cities in America. And, uh, we look forward to going there. It's, uh, you've been there before you've had a, you had your first star cast there. You had your third star cast there, I believe. Yep. And just great wrestling fans. Uh, middle of America, great yeah. restaurants. Just yeah, and I, and I hope you know when the show gets rescheduled because it's not happening that mm-hmm. fans have a great time. Yeah, well, you're just like me. Well, I'm just saying this week you expect you expect the worst. As you and I are recording this, mm-hmm. Lollapalooza is happening in Chicago. 
Right. And Clark County is already uh, one of the hot spots here in America. Right. Along with Las Vegas. Uh-huh. And uh, Chicago has already issued, you know, heads up that, hey, if you're from any of these states and haven't been vaccinated, don't fly here. Right. Because it's a hot spot. So I think uh, the mayor even referred to this weekend's event, the Lollapalooza, as what he believed to be, or they believed to be, because the, the, off, the mayor's office believed to be a super spreader event. Uh-huh. So unfortunately, yep. Tony, we're, uh, we're dumb as a bag of hammers mm-hmm. we're doing what we've been doing here in Alabama, as we are the least vaccinated state because, well, we got to win something besides football around here. So right. dumbest and lowest vaccination, maybe mm-hmm. yet, um, saying all that to say, but I love seeing that lady smoke a cigarette. She Me took too. a cigarette out of her, put it back in her mouth. so She could clap. That's <laughs> old South right there. Anyway. <laughs> I'm just, uh, I'm seeing numbers where there's more active cases of COVID July now mm-hmm. than there was July last year in a lot of States, Alabama included. So I'm not mm-hmm. picking on Chicago, just saying, mm-hmm. I think mass gatherings are going to get shut down and boy, you want to talk about fucking deflating me Yep. on the heels of all these great, you know, WWE pay-per-views and mm-hmm. Monday night Raws and SmackDowns and dynamites. And we're, you know, about to get rampage kicked off and God mm-hmm. damn, what a big event at United center and all this momentum and. I mean, when you just announced United Center, the place went bananas. Yeah, in Charlotte. Stuff. Yeah. yeah. So people were, were just loving a live crowd, and and if we have to go back to empty wrestling again, it's going to be like, oh fuck, is this real? Yeah, yeah it is real. It's never going to stop. Well, I mean, let's not say never. It's never going to stop. Never going to stop. We heard it here, folks. Quote Tony Schiavone. He says all yep. the W shows are canceled. I didn't say that. You a lie. Addiction. A lot of good. Go ahead and get your tickets now. AWTIX.com. Uh, we don't know how long they'll be valid, but pick them up anyway. Cause you a fucking lie. That the American dream Dusty Rhodes is the world heavyweight champion for the third time, but there's not always good news to report. We have to report here today that Jimmy, the boogie woogie man, Viant at the great American bash in Greensboro lost his hair in a hair versus hair match against Number one, Paul Jones. As you know, earlier, Shaska, formerly Pistol Pez Wally, put up his hair, lost his hair, and was shaved. And now it has happened to Jimmy the Boogie Woogie Man Vian. Let's take a look at what happened and relive that moment from the Greensboro Coliseum. Mm. Vian with Jones now back in the ropes. Big right hand on the head. Now there must be a winner in this match. As Vian obviously using an object to work on the side of the head of Jones. The fans are on the edge of their seat right now because this match has been going on for quite a while and neither man wants to lose his hair. You see Baron Monoreski down at ringside and once again, Valiant with the right hand. The momentum is all Jimmy Valiant's right now. Of course, we just watched this last week, but right. yeah. it is kind of fun to uh, to see the, the payoffs for these ball-headed geek promos we've been watching for months now. Oh, yeah, absolutely it is. And uh, I, I, if I remember correctly, I think I just did the commentary right there at, on the set. You ever think if, about how insensitive this was in hindsight? Uh, what, to lose your hair? You've had months of people doing promos about ball headed geek uh-huh. and Baron von Rasch, he's standing right there. Yeah. I don't think about insensitive. It's hurtful. You know, well, I'm, sh- had- I'm sure, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure uh, it's hurtful to you. Baron had because feelings. you're a freaking millennial. I'm not a fucking get over yourself. You're a millennial. Get over yourself. Do something with your life. You little bitch. <laughs> listen <laughs> i need because you know there's no chance that Lori listens to this show for real right yeah right so the next time you're over there doing the grandpa thing and you got the youngest <laughs> who don't know nothing they'll never remember this they'll never hear it <laughs> you make sure when you're sort of solo it's just mm-hmm. you and him mm-hmm. And maybe Lori or yeah. yeah, just her, probably not yeah. the husband. Yeah. With an earshot. Mm-hmm. Do something with your life, you little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> now listen, baby, grandpa's got something really important. I want you to listen <laughs> yeah. up. Can you hear me with your little baby ears? Yeah. Listen up with your little baby ears. Okay. You do something with your life, you little <laughs> bitch. Do you do that baby talks yet? Of course you do. Uh, yeah. Let's hear some of it. 
Mm. Let's hear some. Let's hear some Shivani baby talk. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, hey, what you doing, buddy? Hey, what you doing there, Minter? You a good boy. Come here. Let yeah, go, you good boy. Hit him with it. Hit him with it. <laughs> you good boy. You good boy. Do something with your life, you little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> God, it'll get over so huge. <laughs> Damn, I like Sandy Scott's. I didn't even think about this when we saw it last week. I like his uh, jacket, buddy. Oh, that is right out of the Tony Schiavone collection. You're not kidding, man. I'd wear something like that. I'd wear something like that on Monday nights, put an AEW patch on it. By the way, I want to remind everybody that we do have uh, this JCP sports jacket that you're sporting here. We recreated that years ago. Yep. And had it sewn on to a blue blazer. Uh-huh. And little did we know that a uh, full of piss and vinegar Tony Siobhan or Tony Khan would see that video and say, hmm, mm. isn't that awesome? Something else. And it kicked we, off the resurgence. We should they, mention, uh, as we're headed to this show, as we see uh, the ball headed geek about to go down here. Baby doll and Sam Houston were married just what? Two days prior to this, three days prior to this June 30th, 1986, that same day you guys were running the Dorton arena in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, the next day township auditorium in Columbia on July 31st. And then in San Antonio, Texas, the convention center arena, finally, he got to go to his hometown. Of course, he's heard about San Antonio forever. Uh, but buddy Landell was on that show, by the way, wow. he had Bill Dundee with him and, uh, he defeated George South, uh, by submission. And prior to the bout, a young Terry Runnels was shown watching near the crowd. How about that? Yikes. <clears throat> now that did you did not know that a young Terry Runnels who was just a makeup artist back then. Of course, uh, later on this particular day, August 2nd, when this is airing that morning, it's the end of the great American bash tour, Fulton County stadium, August 2nd, 1986, 12,000 fans, all kids that bought, that bought tickets that day were $5, the road warriors, Ricky Morton and Robert Gibson to all signed autographs before the show. And they had a, a concert and I'm going to probably butcher this Joe Ely, Devil yeah, no- Clinton. Mm-hmm. And Ricky Morton, we are singers, Ricky Morton on stage doing his thing. How about that? <clears throat> well, he had a single, as you know. Yes, I do. Yeah. As, and as Dutch Mantel, uh, told us it went plywood, <clears throat> which was one of my favorite lines ever as being a, being a color guy on uh, worldwide as he was for a time. Well, they went for the whole shebang here, didn't they? Yeah, they're showing the whole thing. All the ball headed geek payoff, and here he is. Yeah. Collecting his hair, much like Lois, when she used to clean up around the house back in 1985. It's probably the last time the house was vacuumed. Yeah. You know, the, the, you know, the deal is that that is so insensitive right there. Oh, right in front of Baron and all that. Yeah. Uh, And look at a gloating Paul Jones. Is that your ringtone yet? It is not. It should be. I know it should be. Everyone would pop backstage. Yeah. Oh my God. Look at this set. Let's track it. Paul Jones. And, uh, <laughs> I, you're laughing. I personally, I think this is, uh, that was quite, uh, horrible the way, uh, you and your guys conducted yourselves. Well, when you do, when you get the job done, you can sit back and relax and laugh about a lot of things. Yeah, but it's, ha- I- it's how you got the job done. Listen, that's the question. How you got the job done. It doesn't matter how you get it done as long as you get it done. And you know, what's so funny is months and months now, now he gets up, he said, Paul Jones, you're going to be a ball headed geek. You're going to be a ball headed geek. And here it is. It gets down to the wire, down to the nitty gritty. And who's a ball headed geek? Jimmy Valiant. I mean, this, this is not only getting the job done. That is not everything well whatever what everything don't interrupt me what everything is is he's out of my hair and he okay paul jones along with bill after <laughs> you're like fuck this we gotta get out of that yeah, yeah we do 
You can't he, let him. Somebody by your elbow here. Let's listen. And then manager precious Paul Ellery. Wow. Tonight in a cage, the Road Warriors get their hands on the midnight. Ex- Imagine showing this to a non wrestling fan. <laughs> what would they think? Yeah, they would think some kinky shit's getting ready to go down. Have you ever baked a potato in the oven? Well, if you have, you know you check it with a fork to see if it's done. Well, in Atlanta Fulton County Stadium tonight, nobody's going to have to check the Midnight Express or Jimmy Cornett with a fork, but they will be done because the difference between the Road Warriors and every other tag team in the world is this. You take any tag team but us, put them on some railroad tracks with a locomotive heading right towards them, and what happens? It runs them over. You put us on the track with the same locomotive, you know what happens? The locomotive takes a dirt road. Yeah, right, big man. You know something, Tony Schiavone? All these people here, I'm not gonna keep you waiting in Atlanta because you got a match to go watch us beat the heck out of the Midnight Express. But not only for you people here in Atlanta, whether it's Los Angeles or wherever we go, let me remind you of one thing. We've been tag team in the air, not once, not only twice, but three years in a row, and we'll bet our life savings, which is a lot, right, Paul? That we'll get it again this year. Now, Midnight Express, the reason you don't want to wrestle us in a regular tag team match is you're scared. You'll say the Rock and Roll Express is number one. You'll say the Andersons deserve, deserve a shot before we do. But the real reason is you're afraid. You're afraid to get in the ring with the Legion of Doom. It don't matter if it's the Midnight Express, the Coloss, or especially you, Ric Flair, Tully Branchard, or the Andersons, whether it's in LA or anywhere else in the country, we're going to get you. You can't run for the Legion of Doom. Right, Paul? That's it. Well, you know, your street brother, the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes, now the world heavyweight champion. We talked to the Russians earlier. And they say they want that world six-man trophy back. But I know that's something you're proud of, something you plan to hold on to. Hey, you know something, Tony Schiavone? We were sitting there in Chicago working out like we always do, minding our own business two years ago. When all of a sudden we put the TV on, and who's on there? Big Mouth, Ivan Koloff, Big Mouth, Khrushchev, and Big Mouth, Nikita Koloff. And what do we do? We took Dusty Rhodes, Tony, for one reason, because he is a street person. We don't want nobody else. As our partner ever, maybe our manager, Paul. We took Dusty because he's a street person. Ain't that right, Paul? Tell him. That's right, Dusty Rhodes. We don't have to talk about your reputation. The world knows that. You're the world champion right now. And being that aside, if it ever comes to the fact that not only are we the six-man champions, if you ever want to face Animal or you ever want to face Hawk, all you got to do is sign the dotted line, Dusty Rhodes. Friendship aside, the world title means a lot of money. And the Legion of Doom runs on money, Dusty Rhodes. The dotted line. Tony? Well, Dusty talked about that. Dusty talked about men going after the world heavyweight title and wanting a title shot. And both of you men have had title shots before. And I know that's still something you're thinking about. Everybody in this world has got a job to do. Whether they're a plumber, a doctor, a nurse, a garbage man? Well, our job's beating people up. Dusty Rhodes' job is beating people up. And we're the best at it. That's why we stand right here and tell you people that. And that's why you people listening say, hey, yeah, they're right. They are the best. And they're going to continue to be the best as long as they feel like fighting. And since it's the only thing we know how to do, we're going to be the best for a long, long time. That's right. Any wrestling magazine told you pick up, you'll see the Legion of Doom, Road Warriors, number one. Ever since we got into this wrestling business, number one we've been. Tag to the air, three years in a row. Man of the air, and he's going to win it again this year, too. So it's only a matter of time. Remember, people, we're the guys that say what we're going to do. And we do it. Take it to the bank. Okay. And we'll be right back with nature boy, Ric Flair. Went a little long for me. Yeah. <clears throat> we had to stretch some time. Nature boy, Ric Flair lost the world heavyweight title to the American dream, Dusty Rhodes. I'm going to be very honest with you. It's unusual for me to come out here 
and announce you without saying heavyweight champion of the world. But that is a fact right now. Only thing I got to say, it was a tremendous match, you and Dusty Rhodes, for the title in Greensboro. Well, Tony, if you find it unusual to announce me as anything but the world heavyweight champion, imagine what it's like for me to walk out here and to be announced as anything except the world heavyweight champion. The word former doesn't fit the name Ric Flair. The name past does not fit the name Ric Flair. But today I'm walking out here, as the whole world can see, I'm just as clean and just as slick as I've always been. I'm still Space Mountain. I'm still in my mind and in the mind of every wrestler in the world today, I'm sure the greatest wrestler alive. The only difference is Dusty Rhodes is now the world heavyweight wrestling champion. He is the number one man in the sport we know to be the greatest sport in the world today. I'm talking about professional wrestling. I didn't slip on a banana. I didn't trip over a referee. I didn't walk in that ring with any kind of injury. I got beat last Saturday night, and I'm going to swallow my pride right now, Tony Schiavone, by a better man on that given night. Not by a better man than Ric Flair, but on that given night by a better man. Now, Tony Schiavone, Dusty Rhodes has got to show me right here in Atlanta, Georgia tonight that he can do it again. He's got to prove to me, nobody else, that he can do it again. When you've been wrestling 12 years, your record is 3,115 wins and six losses, then you can stand out here and talk the way you want to talk because my win-loss record for a fact, is the greatest of all time in this sport, and you'll never see that loss column hit double figures. That means, Dusty Rhodes, that I'm going to dog you, my friend, tonight in Atlanta, if not tonight, St. Louis, Kansas City, Dallas, Greensboro, Richmond, Chicago, Minneapolis, Los Angeles, wherever it is. I got enough money in my bank account to make sure that Jim Crockett, the National Wrestling Alliance, get my name on a dotted line enough times, sooner or later, you're going to have to. It happens that way, my friend. You're going to have to stub your toe, and I'm going to be there to reap the harvest, Eddie. Now, do you think that putting up the title like you did on every night of the bash, when you got down to the 13th bash, had anything to do with... There's no excuse. For every title match I had, Dusty Rhodes had just as tough a match. You see, when you're in the National Wrestling Alliance, Tony Schiavone, and I'm not blowing anybody's horn, Dusty Rhodes right now is the world heavyweight champion. He's the best wrestler in the world today because he's got the belt around his waist. When you're talking about Dick Murdoch, the Road Warriors, the Garvins, the Wahoo McDaniels, the Andersons, the Tully Blanchards, the Koloffs, where do you want me to start? Where do you want me to stop? Right. You're talking about the greatest wrestlers in the world today. This isn't Hollywood. This isn't Broadway. This isn't a music station. This is professional wrestling. I pride myself on being a man, 100% man. Dusty Rhodes, whether I like him or dislike him, has got nothing to do with it. When it came time for the gut check, he walked that aisle. He was a better man than me last Saturday night. But like I said before, my ego and what I feel for myself will not allow this to stay in tune. In other words, I have got to have that title back. And that's all I got to say. Right now, he's the world champion. Right now, he's the best wrestler in the world in the eyes of anybody that knows anything about sports. Because believe me, to walk through an airport or to walk into a hotel or to walk the streets of any major city in the world and have somebody holler across the street or look up to you, look up to you in the eye and say, hey, champ, what's going on? There's no feeling like that in the world. Because you see, I don't care what anybody else tries to tell you. There's only one world heavyweight champion. And he's the man that wears the belt that says National Wrestling Alliance on it. So right now, Dusty Rhodes, you're the man. But you take a look at what's coming after you because you're going to have to show me again. Now, as we can see right here, this is the match. Greensboro, North Carolina. And brother, the joint was packed. And I've always said to Tony Schiavone, and I'll say it again, Greensboro, North Carolina is my town. 
I beat Harley Race for the World Heavyweight Championship That's there. Right. Some of the greatest victories I've enjoyed in this sport were in Greensboro, North Carolina. And I walk in that ring, I was deaf to the boos, I was deaf to the cheers, just like he was. And you're talking about competition at this level, you're talking about the greatest competition in any sport. Two men, two men pit against each other, the best man walks out. As you can see, I was in what I thought a pretty good condition right there until he reached in for that small package. And which that is was a very it. smooth move in our sport. And he got the three count. Well, there you see it, fans. Wrestling history as Dusty Rhodes becomes the world heavyweight champion for a third time. Whether he knows what it's all about. And that's why he comes after it so hard. And that's why I'm going after it so hard. When you've been there, when you walk that aisle with that gold belt around your waist, when you've traveled around the world with that gold belt in your bag, when you've had every wrestling fan in the world, whether they liked you or didn't like you, know that you were the world champion. Well, that's a feeling you can't buy. It's a feeling you're not born with. It's a feeling you can only earn through a whole lot of hard work. And brother, I know what he's feeling right now because I've been there myself and I'm going to be there again. You know, I would say that Maybe now Ric Flair will come after Look at me. David Allen Cole right there. I'm going to say one thing about these bashes. Okay. You know, and I'm not going to change the subject for a minute because we're talking about something real serious right now. But David Allen Cole has been a part of the Jim Crocker Promotions, Great American Bashes across this country. Brother, I don't like country music. But David Allen Cole has turned them on, and I'll tell you what. He's got a real fan in Ric Flair. And believe me, David Allen Cole, you showed me a lot of class when you walked in that ring. Like I said, there's a lot of controversy, a lot of ego. There's a whole lot of things between Dusty Rhodes and Ric Flair that I don't like, that a lot of people don't understand. The bottom line is David Allen Coe showed me a lot of class when he ran up because he is involved. He's an entertainer sitting out here, but he got involved just like everybody did. You did, Jim Crockett, 18,000 fans. The whole world's involved in the World Heavyweight Championship picture. And tonight, Atlanta, Georgia, right here, the Road Warriors, the World Champions, the Midnight Express, the Rock and Roll Express, the Andersons, the Four Horsemen, Ric Flair, Dusty Rhodes, Atlanta, Georgia. You like big time sports? Don't look to the Braves. And don't pay any attention to those rinky dink announcers that work out there. You're looking at a man that makes a million dollars a year. And I don't have to put a headphone on my thing and make a living doing that. I'm talking about big time <laughs> sports. I'm talking about Ric Flair, Dusty Rhodes, the World Heavyweight Championship. And if you got 20 bucks in your pocket, you get down there because you're going to see that title change hands again. Woo! And that's the bottom line. Nature and I'm through. I got nothing else to say. I'm headed for the Coliseum right now, brother. The stadium. Nature boy Ric Flair with us on World Championship Wrestling, going after that World Heavyweight title now held by Dusty Rhodes tonight in a cage at Fulton County Stadium. I'm coming right back. And I don't have to put a headphone on to make my living. Yeah, that was a rip at uh, Skip Carey. And Skip would, at times, rip on us. Yeah. So that's what that was. Oh, a real treat here. Arn and Oli. These are, lo these are long, though, aren't they? Look at them. Just talked to you earlier, Nature Boy Ric Flair, a member of your family, who has now lost the World Heavyweight title. But there's another member of the Horseman, Tully Blanchard, who is a national heavyweight champion. Tonight, going up against Ron Garvin in a tape fist match, and, and Garvin has made a statement I think we're all aware of about this being a do-or-die type situation. He wants to put it all on the line. We're talking about a wrestling career. Arn? Well, Tony Giovanni, any man, I don't care how frustrated, that would make a comment like he's going to risk his whole career on one match, any given match, sounds like to me he's went off the deep end. You understand? Garvin, we all understand, is not playing with a full deck anyway. But for him to take all this anguish out and put it all on the line for one match, he's going to blow it all off his whole career for one match. It sounds like to me his frustration is overriding his better judgment, to be honest with you. Oli, what do you think about his statements? Well, I think it's a stupid mistake. And certainly uh, people right now are thinking that the four horsemen are riding a little bit low, having our problems, sure. But look at it this way. Realistically, for Ric Flair to lose one match out of several hundred, what does that mean? It's only a matter of time before we get right back to the top. We get back to that prominence that we've been enjoying for so long. And for Mr. Garvin to think that he can take advantage of it, 
it just shows what stupid thinking that goes on in his mind because Tully Blanchard would love to see a match wherein Garvin would say, if I lose, I'm out of wrestling. If I lose, I leave the state, I leave the country, or have some kind of restriction in the match where uh, he would be prohibited, let's say, from wrestling the type of style that he does now. Garvin, you're going to get that match, I'm sure. When you do, I think you're going to find out you made a big, big mistake. Okay, we're going to take a look at Ron Garvin in action going up against the Mid-Atlantic Heavyweight Champion Black Bart right now with us on World Championship Wrestling. We'll have the Minnesota Wrecking Crew, Ole and Arn, talk with us. You guys have mentioned many times that Ron Garvin is the master of the... Listen, I like the idea here of showing these matches and having the boys help you commentate. Yeah, I do too. I, I, this is not what Tommy's wearing. Tommy's not wearing his normal outfit here as referee. I know. Look at that. Put a patch on a shirt. I guess they approved it. And uh, there you go. Also, this is probably, I, I got to thinking about this because I mean, the road warrior one went, went long, way too long, way too long. And you know, really <clears throat> the flare one was a little bit long too. He ended up, ended up doing a promo at the end of it as what we know a promo, but this was probably the first, maybe the only time, but I know it was the first time that I really did an interview on this show where you're talking, not just holding the mic. That's right. I, I mean, my, my interview style was, and really is today with AEW. Let's bring in the world champion and you're, you're a human mic stand at that, that point. exactly. But here I'm asking questions and these questions were off the cuff, right? Uh, I, I didn't have any scripts or anything like that to go by. They just wanted me to fill time. And, and I pretty much knew what to say, what to ask. And so I, I, I think they, they were a little bit long. I mean, I, I really pop every time they always say Tony Schiavone, you know, yeah, they course. say my, my entire name. Well, it's you're a mark for yourself and you well, love when people say your name. Okay. No, uh, uh, again, I think I'll say it now for the third time. You a fucking lie. Okay. Okay. Um, why do you get so angry with, why do you speak in anger? Well, I speak in anger because you a lie. But I, I hate when people lie. I thought we were friends and, or whatever. And, well, we it, then stop lying. How am I lying? You lie. You don't like when people say your name. I'm not a mark for myself. No. Oh, well, what's wrong? So you're not proud of what you've done in your career. I'm proud of what I've done in my Why are you so offended by the word mark? Everyone listening to this and especially everyone recording this is a mark, but not for bro, themselves. Bro. Well, you no. wear, I mean, did you buy those earrings because you didn't want to stand out on TV? I no, mean, I bought those earrings because I've always wanted to have earrings. And pretty soon, coming pretty soon, a fucking tattoo. How does that fucking sound? You still gonna let Gallows do it? No, I'm not gonna let Gallows. He's, he's he doesn't have a shop anymore. Does he? Uh, well, what does that matter? He's got the kit. Oh, that's great. I, I got the kit. Let's go out and do a poolside at Gallows' house. Oh, so you're too good to let Gallows tattoo you now? Yes. Oh, well, I'm gonna send if him a clip of this, and he's gonna put a big boot. You know. The dangle. That's his name now. Yeah. The dangle. <laughs> he, he's got the dangling shits. You know about that. The dangling shits. Yeah. Mm. Doc dangling gallows. You don't know about mm. this. Yes, I do know about it. That's how he was announced the other night. Uh, but, uh, yeah, but, he's uh, the ring and he's got his little spinny thing and his beard. Like he likes it. And right. Right. I mean, I think you should let him have you seen his tattoos. A lot of those he does himself. <sighs> Let's get home, start drawing on his arm and shit. Uh, stop it. He at one time had a tattoo shop, which he no longer has. I understand. Is that correct? Yes. So if I want to get a tattoo, I'm going to go into a tattoo shop and well, get he, a tattoo he, done. Here's my question. Would you go with him? Oh to, yeah. To a shop, but yes, I would be painted gypsy <laughs> in Conyers, Georgia. Painted gypsy. That the name of it. That was the, that was the name of his store, yeah, but it's no longer there. I don't believe so. <laughs> Not a lot of businesses that were opened by wrestlers make it. <laughs> I don't know that you knew that. I know there's a lot of businesses. Thanks to COVID uh, that didn't make it anyway. I don't think his was there uh, pre COVID. Okay. I believe so someone it, ripped him off. Yes. And stole his gear. I understand. So now he, Kenny Omega went. And gave them a knee strike to the head. <laughs> Why are we doing this? V trigger. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> or as you call everything, 
I saw this great clip of you on Botchamania just mispronouncing every move. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Canadian destroyer. And it was a death Valley driver. Oh, okay. And then you go death Valley driver. You know, listen guys, that move has a name. Okay. <laughs> <That> was... <laughs> hey, I'm learning. Okay. Oh God. I'm learning all this bullshit. At least I'm trying. No, listen, I loved it, man. I'm just so glad you're back. Such a great part of our wrestling fandom. And, you know, listen, there's been, there's all these like, uh, and they're hardworking people and they're wrestling fans, just like me and you, but there's a lot of like new announcers on, on a lot of the other stations. And you're like, well, who, who is this guy? And they're probably living their dream just like you are yours. But when I see you do the exact same thing they do, I just like it better when you do it. And y'all could say the same thing and wear the same thing. I just like it better when you do it because. I, as a wrestling fan, know, like, and trust you. Yeah. Nostalgia. So when you introduce someone new into the mix, even if they're doing a fine job and they're doing the same thing and you know, it's really good. It's just not you. So we don't like it as much. And I feel like perhaps nobody has paid that price more than Michael Cole. If Michael Cole was the voice of another wrestling promotion in another day and time, I think people would probably appreciate him, but because he followed sheer Bros and mm. the WWE style has changed. People have decided Michael Cole sucks and that's probably that's, not fair. No, that's not fair because he doesn't No, And I don't know about these new, uh, announcers that you're talking about, but I'm sure that the WWE has run into a few new guys. And uh, have you seen Pat McAfee called WWE yet? Uh, no, I've not. You got to go out of your way to see it. You will love his style. Really? You know how it felt dude, like when, when Jesse Ventura came on the scene, like he had his own style and it was just right. different. Yeah. Well, Pat does it, but Pat is like me and you, he's a super fan. Have you watched, um, have you watched UFC before and really sat down and listened to Joe Rogan's commentary? No. Well, Joe Rogan is just an excitable fan. Now he happens to know a lot about mixed martial arts, specifically jujitsu. So, so he studies it and he's passionate about it and he loves it, but he is a fan first. Okay. And I think that's what you want in a color guy, somebody who can get you excited because enthusiasm is infectious. That's right. And, uh, man, Pat McAfee does a great job there. And I think you would like it. I mean, hell, he gets so excited about the stuff that a lot of the times he's standing up at the desk, watching the match. So he's calling wow. the match, but standing up, it's very reminiscent. It's like a modern day David Crockett. Okay. You know, where maybe David, he, he doesn't know all the, all the lyrics to the song, but boy, he's excited to be singing. Yeah. Well, uh, maybe that's, uh, does it do play by play? He, he's the color guy color guy. Okay. Uh, on what show SmackDown on SmackDown. Okay. He's in the Corey grave seat, if you will. All right. Well then I'll have to check it out. And I think Corey does a great job. Oh, I've always liked Corey. I've always liked him. I, I just think, and I think, I, I think Corey and Michael Cole are a great team. I do. Uh, so. I think Corey, uh, gets lumped into that. Oh, he's with WWE. So it's not cool. You know, there's a whole lot of anti WWE fans online and I get it, but yeah, it's like, man, not everybody who works there is terrible. Not everything they do sucks. Like, no, no, you're right. You, you, you look, you find what you're looking for, you know? So like if you handed Lois, your phone, and just let her go through your phone. Whoa. If she looked hard enough, she could find something to be mad about. You, nah. But if she looked hard enough, she could find something to be happy about. You find what you're looking for. And we found Arn Anderson. Let's take a listen. My two of the four horsemen tonight, a bunkhouse match against the rock and roll express. And then of course your cousin, nature boy, Rick Flair gets a chance to get that world title back. And you mentioned the four horsemen are always around. Tony Giovanni and the Greensboro Coliseum when dusty Rhodes did, and he's to be congratulated. He did upset the world. No, he's not champion. To be congr don't even congr well, <laughs> you do what you want to do. Okay. Anyway, what I'm saying, he ought to be taken out and go ahead. Anyway, in theory, what I'm saying, there was one fateful night that we didn't hang around. Maybe we got a little lackadaisical. Maybe we did get a little overconfident. Maybe we didn't realize that Flair was getting just a little fatigued and a fluke, a miracle. One brief moment of divine intervention could happen on a given night. It happened. I assure you in Atlanta Fulton County Stadium, we will be on hand. Things are going to go our way. Roads. You're going to pay dearly for your little brief moment of glory. I assure you, tonight is as good a night as any. And the Rock and Roll Express bunkhouse match.
Uh, first so. of all, people better understand that in a bunkhouse match, there aren't any rules, all right? And we're just in the mood right now not to have any rules whatsoever. Don't care about the referees. Don't care about anybody else. Don't care about the officials. And we sure don't care about the Rock and Roll Express. When he gets done doing his singing, that's going to be about the end of it. In a bunkhouse match with no rules, anything goes. We take our boots, take our belts, and do anything we want to do. It's legalized mayhem. But the thing that gets me mad, and you're talking about congratulating Dusty Rhodes, and it's that. It wasn't a mistake. It wasn't a fluke. Dusty Rhodes knows what he's doing. They go ahead and they get a ring around there. They've got a cage. They've got a bunch of policemen. They make sure that there's no way that the horseman can get in. I'm talking about Greensboro. Well, this time you can do anything you want down there. I guarantee you all four of us are going to be in that Fulton County Stadium. Make it five because J.J. Dillon's also be included. We get done with our bunkhouse match. You're not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. Tully's not going anywhere. I don't think Garvin's going to go anywhere either, but not because he's going to help anybody. And we're going to be watching. If there's a fence, if there's a barricade, if there's police, I'm bringing wire cutters. I'm going to bring anything I got to bring to get down there and make sure that this time justice is served. Dusty Rhodes, you and I were just good buddies from a long time back. I just love you to death. I love you dearly. You just make sure you show up in that Fulton County Stadium tonight because I guarantee you we're going to be waiting and we're going to have some presence going to take you a long time to unwrap. But the one thing that I can guarantee above all else is that you are not going to walk away from Fulton County Stadium under your own power. You are not going to be able to stand up like I've been watching you on TV so many times with your hands up like this. You're not going to be able to sing with David Allen Cole anymore either. Dusty Rhodes, you better just pack it in because tonight's your through. Fans, we'll be right back. God damn, Ole Anderson was the man. <laughs> Listen, he... Uh, he I no thought one... Arn was trying to take a calm tone, and he's like, nope, nope. <laughs> Get under the learning tree. Oh my God. Lord of mercy. By superstar Bill Dundee, <laughs> along with nature boy, Buddy Landell. Woo! Good to have you back with us, buddy. It's superstar Bill Dundee. Good to have you with us. Well, it's nice to be here. Tony, what, what's your name? Tony Shivani. Tony Shivani. That, that sounds more like a disease that doesn't name. Does it? <laughs> but I, I, I know, I know what you're all saying, girls. I know you're all going to get on your telephone. You're going to call somebody and you're going to say the real nature boy's back. And he's bought the cutest little devil from Australia you ever did see. And that's right. Bill superstar Dundee. Now I'm not going to, well, what can I say? I mean, I know you're going to say, you're going to sit out here and brag and tell a lot of things that ain't true. No, we're going to sit here and tell you the truth folks. Cause if we say we're good looking, you just got to look at your TV screen and you're going to see we are now girls. If you like them tall and blonde, you got the nature boy. If you like them a little bit shorter and a little darker, you got the superstar, but it don't really matter if it comes to singing, dancing, wrestling and wrestling is the name of the game that we're in Tony, right? We're exactly. the best there is now. We're the best single wrestlers in the whole wide world. The nature boy wins all his matches. I win all mine, but when you put us in a tag match, son, you've got poetry in motion. You got the real nature boy and the superstar. Tell all the girls. Hello, bud. Well, Tony Schiavone, the nature your boy Buddy Landell is back on the scene, baby, and I ain't hanging around back either, Daddy. I'm coming through the front door. Too tall, too tanned, and too good looking, Daddy. And another thing, Tony, I told you the last time I was here, they had that bogus guy coming out here stealing my name, Rick. I believe his name's Rick Flair. It's I told the people out there that I was the only nature boy, right or wrong. Now, that's apparent to the fact that Rick Flair couldn't get the job done, and that's why Dusty Rhodes, the American Dream, took the belt away from him. Call it a fluke, call it what you want to, but the man's got the belt. When the checks are signed, he's the one that gets the heap of load. You know what I'm talking about? And that's what I'm here for, Daddy. And I brought the cute guy from Australia here, and we're here to get the business done, if you know what I'm talking that's about. That's right. So, Tony Savannah, I can just tell you something. This guy has been often imitated, but never duplicated. So, Talk whatever you want to say, fellas, we're not coming here to jerk the curtain, Daddy. We're coming to close the show. Now, I can imagine ah, Dusty Rhodes. I love it. Fan. I'm Dusty Rhodes, the man of the hour, the man too sweet to be thawed. Hey, we don't care how sweet you are, Jack. We just want that gold you're carrying. So, just anytime you want to sign the, the belt, on the line, Daddy, just either against the nature boy, the superstar. We don't care, Rhodes. We just want it. And anybody else's. Oh, and the road warriors, they're big and bad. They're as big as oxes, and I bet they're twice as smart, too, right? They're great. I'm not taking nothing <laughs> off you, but we're the best there is, Daddy. Because like I just keep saying, girls, you think we're lying to you? Look at the monitor. Look how cute we are. Yeah, we'll tell you. We're pretty. We're the best there is, and we can also fight. You want to talk something? Okay, let's take a look right now at a match. Nature boy, Buddy Landell along with superstar Bill Dundee going up against George South. Now, you mentioned, you've mentioned, buddy, that Bill is your player coach. There's Terry. Look at Terry. Terry, Terry Boatwright. Wow. I've got it. Terry Boatwright, soon to be Terry Reynolds, Marlena. Yep, she came out. Uh, 
<clears throat> what's the story? Do you know the story? And, and maybe I should know it of why we accepted buddy back so quickly. No, uh, that, that's, that seems, I don't know. Probably I because mean, he was a big draw for y'all when he was doing the, the real nature boy thing. He, well, I, I don't know if he was, I, I guess, I mean, the fact is, you know, he didn't show up. He had a, you know, he had a drug problem and, uh, they just fucking fired him. And obviously he tried to get back and it worked. And, uh, well, why are you, why are you hating on, buddy? I'm not hating on anybody. You fucking liar. Oh God. Why are you so angry? I'm just, I'm just nipping it, nipping it, nip it in the fucking bud before it starts. If you want, I'll just lay out and you can call it. No, I don't want you to lay like out fucking self. You I don't want, shit I don't want you. I don't want, but I gotta I take want... this kind of shit. I'm a damn good looking man. I ain't gotta put up this kind of shit. <laughs> Watching, you've been watching too much wrestling in your day, buddy. <laughs> Dude, how great was, uh, I know he's not your favorite, but how great was, uh, Bill Dundee? Oh, he's, uh, Bill Dundee was great. He, no, he, I like Bill. I, I thought I loved Bill as, uh, the little guy with the, with the hat waving the flag for Steve Regal. July 31st, 1985 at the, uh, Dorton arena in Raleigh, North Carolina. They did the battle of the nature boys. Right. And it was Ric Flair and buddy Landell. Again, it's about a year prior to this July 31st, 1985. It set an all-time attendance record at Dorton arena. Wow. How about that? So he outdrew Elvis and, uh, <laughs> everybody. No, it's real. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Listen, buddy was good, man. Not only, not only, not only you have a pretty good rap. And, and of course, you know, a lot of the wrestlers rap kind of started to, to me, started to sound the same, uh, but he had not only had a pretty good rap, but he was a hell of a worker. He really was. I mean, he could watch some of the stuff he does in here, just some good stuff, you know? So yeah, but he was a talent, man. I, uh, friend of the show, was, Dave Milliken, he loves him. Some superstar bill Dundee, and he does a great Dundee impression. Really? I was hanging out with him the other day and, uh, I started talking about his son, Jamie Dundee. Right. He told a great story for back in the day when they were both in Memphis and some, something was happening with, with his son and Lawler asked bill and Dave imitated bill's accent. And my God, he crushed it. Let's listen to the commentary and see what they're saying about this yeah. matches. We see Landell taking on George South. Our referee is Pee Wee Anderson. Who would have thought all this time later, it would be George and Dundee. The referee and Landell would no longer be with us. Dundee and wow. Buddy Landell being a great tag team, great single wrestlers. I would assume during every match that you have, Buddy, that the superstar will be with you and vice versa. You'll always be together in the ring. Well, yeah, that's what it's all about, brother, because, like, I think it was Ole Anderson I had saying sometimes the referee doesn't see everything. Well, if they don't see everything, I would match Jack. We're getting up in his face to kill him. Okay, Buddy Landell now putting pressure on the arm of that's George what I learned from my friend Arne Novi there. You get that? Watch it. It's a special present, Tony Schiavone, for you and Jim Cornette, my good friend Jim Cornette. I love him to death. Look at this now. Have you like ever it? seen that hose nose bogus Rick do that? <laughs> I don't even it. think he can drop kick. That is one of the most awesome moves I've ever seen, right on the concrete floor. Now, I'll tell you, let me tell you something, Tony Schiavone. I'll tell you one time I was wrestling Dusty Rhodes, and to my surprise, he hit me with that big elbow when I got up and, and, uh, and gathered my senses back. When I turned around, he drop kicked me right in the face. Now he can do it, and I got all respect the world for him. But don't get me wrong, he's a hell of a man. But he's not Buddy Landell or Superstar Bill Dundee, and that's why we're here. A little bit when we went, but nobody told me anything back. He said I was thought when Dusty hit me with that elbow. He said I was waiting on a bus and a train came past. Well, brother, we know all about your bionic elbow, and we got the cue for that, Daddy. Now we're getting tired of playing with this Jack. We're going home very sure that you watch this. Now. <laughs> Come on, buddy, go figure for it. Have you ever seen anybody do this move right here except the Nature Boy Rip, Buddy Landell? Woo! Spinning Fire elbow. Great. Rope. Now watch now. What do you call six. this? Huh. The, the figure four right. leg lock. Right. Emphasize exactly. Emphasize on the first word. The figure four. Thank okay. You. The figure four leg lock. by who? Right. Nature Boy Buddy Landell. And this boy screaming, please let me up, Mr. Landell. Please let me up. Well, you could tell it was just a matter of time. It's a little workout. Little workout. That's and all it was, brother. Little workout. There's superstar Bill Dundee up What's the, the slow mo? Am I higher than the top rope or what? Huh? Well, huh? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It would appear so. Down. This angle you just jumped off the top hey, rope. Hey, 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 hey. Look at that. It took five minutes to come down. <laughs> it's hell being extremely this boy, handsome. This boy's so fast, man. When he it's hell being extremely handsome.
<laughs> it's obvious that you guys have come here to World Championship Wrestling ready, really ready to take on just about anybody. You well, mentioned Dusty Rhodes. You mentioned Ric Flair. You mentioned everybody. Well, there's no sense coming to beat up George South. Everybody can do that. We come here to beat the best there is. And I know you're saying we're bragging. That's what I'm telling you. Just sign the matches. Ric Flair, the Rock and Roll Express, the Midnight Express, the Road Warriors. You just do. We don't care, brother. We just come here to make a name for ourselves. We've already made it all over the rest of the world. So we just come here to show you how pretty we are and to tell you how bad we are. And when they sign the matches, we'll show you how bad we are, boy. Tony, you know, hey, when I left here, I was one of the top wrestlers in the Politics, world, okay? Yeah, was hey, well, Chad whatever, Politics. okay, listen. Yeah, I took seven or eight months off of attitude <laughs> adjustment, baby. I'm back on the scene for one reason. I'm talking, I could wrestle anywhere in the world that I wanted to, but if it don't say Jim Crockett promotion, it's not wrestling. It's not professional wrestling. And that's another reason why I'm here, Daddy. I'm working for class because I am top-notch with my friend, Superstar Dundee. That's right, We're top-notch, Daddy, or we wouldn't be here. No, I'll ask you something else. I okay. bet you can go around and ask any wrestler in the rest of this territory right here. Do they have Julian Collins' private phone number? No, sir. Superstar Bill Dundee, Nature Boy Buddy Landell. When we come back, we'll look at the Kansas Jayhawks. Don't go away. Oh, God. Do they have Joan Collins' personal phone number? <laughs> Golly, it's so great. By the way, if our buddy, well, my buddy, I don't think you claim him. If Corey Ryan Forster was a professional wrestler, he would be Buddy Landell. The accent's the same and everything. And, man, we're not done. Listen to this. <laughs> World Championship Wrestling, Jim Crockett Promotions, the NWA, the Midnight Express, they're the World Tag Team Champions, the Road Warriors, Ole and Arn Anderson. Well, we're very happy to have with us right now to be with us on World Championship Wrestling, the Kansas Jayhawks. To my right, the hangman, Bobby Jaggers, one of the great single champions from up in the Pacific Northwest. And his tag team partner is part of the Kansas Jayhawks, Dutch Mantell, one of the great champions from the southern part of the country. And Bobby... You know, this is a great place for tag teams. The world tag team champions are here, the Midnight Express, and I know that's why you're here. Well, you know something, Tony Schiavone? The epitome of professional wrestling, whether you're a single wrestler or whether you're a tag team wrestler, is be sitting in this chair right next to you where I'm sitting today. This is something that people in this business work for, strive for, to be in the epitome of professional wrestling, Jim Crockett Promotions, NWA. And I came here, and I'm a very happy man today because I've got another Kansas boy with me, Dutch Mantell. His record speaks for itself. Like he said, we're both good single wrestlers, but Coronet's got the tag team titles. He's got the Midnight Express. And the Midnight Express, we're looking for you. We came all this way, not just sitting here and lollygag around. Put your name on a contract, and Dutch and I'll be there. Right, partner? You know, we came a long way for the Midnight Express. Now, they are sitting on top of the fishbowl, baby. I mean, they're up there on top. And like Bobby just said, this is where a lot of tag teams would like to be sitting right here talking to Tony Schiavone. But we're talking to all of America right now. And, you know, you can't ever tell which way the train went by looking at the tracks because sometimes it don't, don't tell you one thing. But I'm going to tell you one thing. We're coming after the Midnight Express. Now, every, anytime, now, Tony, you know this from past experience, anytime you get a third man outside that ring, like Jimmy Cornette with a tennis racket, he can create quite a problem for you. That's right. Quite a problem. And I've run across quite a problems in my wrestling career. But I brought a little friend with me that's got me out of a lot of jams. This is called a bull whip. And it's 10 foot long and it'll stop a 1200 pound bull and i think it'll stop a 230 pound wrestler right dead in his tracks not to mention cornet now we're after you and i know some now we're gonna have to wait a while maybe wait in line just a little bit before we get to the midnight express but we're patient we waited this long to get here and we can wait just a little bit longer but i'm serving notice today on jim cornet and the midnight express that we're hot on your trail and it's not a cold trail it's real, real hot. Seem like a lot of people around here are mad at a lot of other people because to sit right here, the Jim Crockett promotion, you got to be a man. And if you can't stand up to the test, baby, then you're going to get dumped by the wayside. They're going to dump you like yesterday's garbage. But Cornette, you know, like I said, you're sitting on top of the world, but you can't sit there forever because test after test after test is going to come your way. And when we get to you, the test is going to be there because we're great single wrestlers, right. and I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but I've had a lot of success in this wrestling profession. So has Bobby. And now we're a tag team and we're going against an established tag team in a midnight express. But boys, when you match experience against experience, Hey, we'll be with you every step of the way, baby. This ain't my first time to the rodeo guys. I've been here before and I intend to stay. And sometimes you only get so many chances at something, but we get a chance at the midnight express. We're going to make that one chance count. That's right. You know, something else, Tony Schiavone, one thing, the big old bodyguard, big Bubba. Well, Bubba, you stick your nose in a lot of people's business. We heard down the road what you did to Dusty Rhodes. You like to stick your nose in business, stick it in our business. 
because this shoe fly will darn sure fit around your hiney, boy. And when it's fitting around your hiney, Cornette, while you're running, we're going to be pinning your tag team, one, two, three, and become the world tag team champions. Okay, the Kansas Jayhawks, Hangman Bobby Jaggers and Dutch Mantown. There's no doubt from talking to these two men that World Championship Wrestling, the NWA will be hearing a lot from these two, especially three men will be hearing a lot from them. Jim Cornette, beautiful Bobby, and Loverboy Dennis, the men that express. Gentlemen, we look forward to seeing you in the future. Thank, Thank you, Tony. Tony. We'll be right back. You love that promo, didn't you? I love everything about them. It's just so filled with cliches, and I yep. love... It's just, I just love everything about the Kansas Jayhawks. And I think Mr. Shit. Jagger should have, uh, should have untucked that shirt, but nobody's going to make any recommendations to captain redneck here. Yeah, Let's sir, check him out. looks like you're ready to sell him some term life insurance in the world today. <laughs> one of the top five in the NWA. And it's good to have you back with us on world championship wrestling. Cap. Boy, thank you very much. You know, it's just a privilege and a pleasure to be associated with Jim Crockett promotions. And first of all, you know, I'd like to take just a second and congratulate my old partner. And the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes, on winning that World's Championship belt. You know, he beat a heck of a man, a heck of a champion at the time in Ric Flair. Yeah. You know, I've been around, like you say, a few years, and I've watched a lot of World's Champions, and I've watched a lot of professional athletes. And those two right there are classics. You come into, it's truly a hotbed for wrestling. A lot of great stars are here. You talked about Dusty. You talked about Ric Flair. And a lot of other great stars here. Great wrestlers are right here. Well, to me, it's got the best there is in the world. You know, I was up in the WWF, and I was one half of the world's tag team Whoa. championship up there. And I came back to NWA. I came back to Jim Crockett Promotions. Like you said, they have got the finest wrestlers, I think, in a profession today. You've got those Russians, who I don't like. You've got an awesome team in the Road Warriors. You've got Magnum TA. I mean, you can go on Tully Blanchard, Wahoo McDaniels. I mean, credibilities and legends in their own time right here. Okay, we're going to take a look at a match. Captain Redneck Dick Murdoch going up against Bill Mulkey. Let's take a look at that match, and uh, Dick Murdoch will be here with us, commentating over that match. Take a look at Captain Redneck Dick Murdoch in action. Going up against Bill Mulkey. Tell me about uh, Captain Redneck. We don't spend a lot of time talking about him. No, we don't. Uh, I know a lot of people really didn't like him. Uh, and, and again, Dick Murdoch and I got along quite well. Uh, I know uh, the late great and one of the men I've always respected, uh, Lord Alfred Hayes, really didn't like him. I remember Lord. I remember when I started working up there. I <clears throat> we started talking about him. He said he is a horrible man. He is a brute. He is a, just an ogre. And I said, you know what? I said I I I got to disagree with you. I said I always got along with him. He was he was like always good to me. And he says. Do you trust my judgment of people? I said, yes. He said, well, trust me when I say he's a horrible man. So, <clears throat> so I know there was a lot of people out there that didn't like him. I remember picking him up at a hotel one time and <clears throat> it was a hotel in Charlotte and taking him to the arena. And I knocked on the door. It was one of those doors, uh, hotels that, you know, had the door outside to the parking lot. He opened the door. He said, <clears throat> he had a big bag of popcorn a big bag of caramel popcorn. He said, I've been eating this whole bag of caramel popcorn. You want some? I can't finish it off. I said, no, I'm okay. <laughs> just, just as plain. And, you know, he was, uh, he was also a big part of my fandom too. Uh, I've got pictures that I have here somewhere. Uh, the night that Ric Flair first wrestled Blackjack Mulligan in that great angle in Greensboro, uh, Dick Murdoch wrestled Harley race for the world title. And that was, that was really, you know, a part of my fandom. Murdoch first came in as a heel to Jim Crockett Promotions, and I was there on Thanksgiving night when he wrestled in the uh, the, the two ring battle royal they would always have on Thanksgiving night. They brought in Andre and Dick Murdoch and some others, and he got on the microphone and cussed out North Carolina. But then they brought him back, and never will forget because I heard David Crockett say on TV, "Coming soon to Mid Atlantic Championship Wrestling, the sensational Dickie Murdoch." So they. Turn, turn him into a baby face, and he was a big baby face at that time. We're talking about the late uh, the late seventies. So here they're bringing him back as a baby face once again, and there's his brain buster, which wasn't really a good one, but he sort of took care of his the guy he was working with. But uh, he was a hell of a draw at one time. He really was. Those are just some of my memories of him. Well, recently uh, Jim Ross confirmed that he was a member of the KKK. Really. So that kind of brought down my, uh, my fandom a little bit. Yeah, boy, just brought down mine too. I mean, uh, I, so maybe I, he was this, maybe he was this ogre and this brute 
that, I was going to uh, say, I think your man, Lord Alfred Hayes, was on the money when he said, trust me. Yeah. Trust you my that. judgment, people. Right. Yeah. Because right. the gimmick is, listen, in wrestling, there's lots of rumor and innuendo, and you never know really what to believe. Right. Well, I had heard for years people say, oh, well, I think, and I heard, and blah, blah, blah. And Jared was like, no, no, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's real. Let's listen. There's not going to be any kicking out on that. Well, I'm sure using the brain buster and by what we have seen in the, in your match that you're going to be very confident and very willing to take on anybody that would like to come up against that brain buster, whether it be gorgeous, Jimmy Garvin or whomever. Well, you know, it don't matter where I go. It doesn't matter if we're going to Philadelphia. It doesn't matter if we're going to St. Louis, Missouri. It don't matter where we're going across the world with the Jim Crockett promotions. You know, I'm going out there and I'm going to go out there and I'm going to battle them Russians. I'm going to go out and I'm going to battle the Iron Andersons. We're going to battle a lot of people. And these places I've mentioned, a lot of places they know when I speak the truth, I get out here and I'll tell you, I'm going to whip somebody. I'm going to whip them. And in L.A., it's going to be Iron Anderson for that world TV championship belt. And I'll guarantee you, Iron Anderson, you're going to know you've been in a battle. I promise you. Now, you mentioned the Russians. Now, you talked also about being <laughs> a, uh, the next serviceman and being very proud of this country. I know when you see the Russians up here, like we saw moments ago with Ivan Koloff and uh, Nikita Koloff, Karsha Khrushchev, not only degrading our wrestlers, but degrading the country. It's something that I guess when you go to the ring against them that you'll be thinking of. Well, you know, I've had a, I hate to throw salt, no wounds, you know, but it's like when the Iran crashes, you know, they, they you know, we kind of took a back seat and let a little small puny country run over us there. And then these Russians, they get up here and mouth off. Well, you know, like I say, I'm proud. I was proud to do a duty in the Marine Corps. And I know a lot of other people out there, boy, they sit there and they buy them tickets and they just had the chance. They want to put their hands on them too. Cause we live. And I've been all over the world. We live in the greatest place in the world. Sometimes, sure, we get down a little bit. Sometimes, like we're now, an oil crisis, where the price of oil is down. It's affected a lot of people's uh, lifestyle and earnings. But when you weigh all the situations in this hand against all the situations that hand, and you look at other countries, this ain't such a bad place to live. And if Russia was so great, why aren't they there? Yep, that's right. We, we talked about Dusty Rhodes being your close personal friend and you go way back. I know a lot of fans would love to see Captain Redneck, Dick Murdoch, and Dusty Rhodes maybe team up in the ring once again. Well, I would too. You know, we were the original Texas Outlaws. And when they nicknamed us the Texas Outlaws, it was the truth. We were, and I feel this today, the greatest tag team combination ever in professional wrestling. And at that time, we were great. It was a bruising crush. You know, I mean, they were great right. people. But Dusty Rhodes, he's come a long way. And, and you know, it's... What other country but good old United States of America, like he says, can a son of a plumber go out and become world's champion? Or, you know, when I left home, my dad was a professional wrestler, my uncle. When I left home, I got a handshake, a pat on the back, and he said, don't come back. Right. You know, you're stepping out into a man's world, kid. And, and heck, I've done pretty good, and I'm not patting myself on the back. I've come a long way in professional wrestling, and it's just a great country, and it's a great sport, and, boy, I'd love to be teamed with him again. Yeah, and I'm sure all the fans across the country would love to see Dusty Rhodes and Captain Redneck Dick Murdoch team up. And if that would happen, there are a lot of great tag teams. You mentioned the single wrestlers, but the Road Warriors, the Midnight Express, a man that you called to while you were defeating Bill Mulkey. Uh, Jim Cornette has a lot to say a lot of times. Yeah, you know, to me, a manager, someone like Cornette's a leech. Uh -huh. You know, I mean, they're in all kinds of sports, but they're leeches. They don't ever get in a the ring. They stand around, they shot obscenities, and they they... Like carries a tennis racket around in professional right. wrestling. That's right. It hits what, what are we going to do? Put them little skirts on him before long? <laughs> Have him run around playing with Billie Jean King? I don't know. I don't know. But, you that. know, they're leeches, and they want to stand up there. If they want to be in wrestling, get them in there. Let's mm -hmm. put some trunks on them. Get them in there. Let's duke it up, and we'll weld old Bertha to the end of this honker. So you can definitely say you're ready for well, the NWA. That's well, right. Old Bertha to the end of his honker. <laughs> Weld it. Kendall's neighbor singing, if you're waiting on me, you're backing up. By golly, we're ready. We're waiting for the bell to sound, and you know, I'm just getting ready right now to go out here to Fulton County Coliseum. Uh, Jimmy Crockett come up to me. He wants me to manage Ronnie Garvin. How come he and Flair both called it Coliseum? Just force right. a habit? Yep. Part of this bash. You know, I sit out there on my farm in Canyon, Texas, and I sit on the satellite and we hear about it, but I just want to be part of it. And I'm proud, proud to be here. And I'm getting an old pickup and we're driving over. Well, I'll tell you what, Jim Crockett Promotions, proud to have Captain Redneck, Dick Murdoch with us. And you can better believe fans, and especially maybe you, Jim Cornette, or whomever listening out there, You'll be hearing a lot from this man, Captain Redneck, Dick Murdoch. Okay, next week we'll be back with you on World Championship Wrestling with another great two hours. Until that time, I'm Tony Schiavone. We'll see you at the matches. Thank you, Tony. See you at the matches. Yeah, I like that. He said, my, my daddy gave me a handshake and pat on the back. He said, don't come back. <laughs> you got to get excited. I've been saving people all those dollars. They can limousine rides and just flying out with that extra cash.
and they can style and profile with a quick 10 minute phone call right now to 425-0105. That's 425-0105. Woo! Save with Conrad.com. <laughs> you should have said that to uh, Chris and uh, and Matt. Uh, I should have said to the twins, or, or maybe Lois. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, maybe. How about that uh, original pink one he was rocking? Yeah, how about that? That's uh, what uh, what style shirt was that? That had uh, the penguin on it. That was, it was a, the manufacturer's original penguin, but it was like a polo style shirt, but it probably bunched up at the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what they did back then. Love the cliche field. It was uh, the interviews a little bit too long. They really were stretched out, but yeah. because we're, what we're used to, we're used to just me at the set with promos, but I guess we're going to get back that to the next week because next week the bashes will be over. Yeah. And I think next week we'll be back to our regularly scheduled program, but man, we've had such a good time celebrating the, the great American bash and, and everything that happened in 1986. I didn't feel like we could skip this episode where we had dusty, you know, with his real first promo was since he's become the champion. And of course, flair fresh off the loss, good stuff, man. But next week, and I'm so thankful we're back on the peacock network. Uh, so everybody can uh, make it a little easier to access these shows. And next week is going to be really, really fun. Um, we got Ricky Morton. Who's going to be out here doing some stuff with uh, Robert Gibson and Arn yeah. Noli? Of course, David Crockett's going to be back. You're going to reveal that Steve Regal is the new NWA Junior Heavyweight Champion. Mm-hmm. Cornette's going to be on the show. Lots of fun stuff, and uh, we're going to see Dutch Mantel and Bobby Jaggers in in action, which I know you're excited about. We'll see Buddy Landell in action again, and of course, we're going to have uh, some Ric Flair promos. So. It's always a good time when you're watching Jim Crockett promotions in 86. And, and, and it's pretty apparent with Murdoch coming in and, and Landell and, and Dundee and uh, the Kansas Jayhawks that were trying to bring in new fresh talent. Cause that's what you all, that's what you always had to do in the old territory days was being, bring in fresh talent, uh, doing different angles. So it's good to see those. And yeah, uh, this is, we're now going to get into the rock and roll express super summer sizzler tour part of what's going on. Uh, and also we're going to, I think did Nikita and Magnum, they went to seven, didn't they? Seven matches. That's exactly right. They're going to have a match on August 10th. So the day after what we're covering next week in Asheville, North Carolina, it's a matinee show that has uh, Ricky Morton and Robert Gibson in concert. That's right. The rock and roll express concert. Yep. Uh, but you also do a TV taping there for worldwide, which would have Magnum pinning Nikita to tie it up three a piece. Wow. So we're cooking with gas, man. It's fun stuff. The, uh, the, the concert I believe was, <clears throat> was also the end of the super summer sizzler tour. Uh, cause I was at that show. I was at all of them and we did, we finished up in Asheville. That's when we announced, uh, miss rock and roll express later this month. Of course, uh, the best of seven comes to an end. It's your main event on August 16th in Philadelphia at the civic center. It's Magnum TA and Nikita, and they go to a no contest. Wow. Bob Geigel is your referee. So they do another one, JCP in Charlotte, North Kakalaki, mm-hmm. sold out, hanging from the rafters. And, uh, of course, Nikita is going to win about the 14 minute mark. So lots of shenanigans happening. And, uh, that's really sort of the big last hurrah for, uh, for Magnum TA, we know that he's going to have quite the event just a couple of months after this. Mm. It's hard to believe all of this happened in the same calendar year, but we're going to pick it up where we left off next week, Tony. But as for now, it looks like it's about that time. And coming to the ring is Cassio Kid, along with Dave Silva. The loser of this match will be blamed for the who dug it. And my God, would you take a look? At this, Dave Silva has welded Big Bertha to the end of the honker of Cassio Kid. Cassio Kid is trying to say something. Let's see if we can't get the microphone close to him. Yes, I think he's saying, do something with your life, you little bitch. Hey, we're desperately out of time. See you next week on What Happened When. We come to you Wednesdays on Westwood One, also known as Cumulus. But on Mondays, we come to you on... Patron!
patreon.com forward slash WHW Monday. And of course, at freeshows.com. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30 year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money, it's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at savewithconrad.com.